Hello and welcome to session two of the UVM Basics course here on Verification Academy, UVM Hello World. I'm Tom Fitzpatrick, Strategic Verification Architect here at Siemens EDA. And similar to the C Hello World example, this will be an actual runnable example in UVM to give us confidence moving forward that we kind of know what's going on. Also, like the C Hello World example, it's not terribly useful, but it will show us how to get things running. We start out with our typical DUT, which is a module. The UVM verification environment consists of a fixed part and a variable part, as we discussed in the previous session. The fixed part is the UVM environment itself, which includes all of the components that we need for communicating with the DUT. And the variable part is the test that configures the environment to do whatever it is we need for this particular example. The UVM environment is all class-based. It's implemented through System Verilog classes. The communication is through a System Verilog interface. So the interface and the DUT module themselves are structural, and all of this is instantiated in a top-level module. Once we have this understanding, let's move forward and look at what each of these individual pieces actually looks like. The interface is a standard System Verilog interface. We declare it as interface DUT IF, and it includes in it whatever signals are necessary for actually communicating with the DUT. The DUT itself is a module, and the port connection to that module is the DUT interface itself. And then in the top-level module, we instantiate the DUT interface and the DUT, and we connect up the DUT interface to the DUT. In the environment, we extend the environment from a base class called UVM underscore ENV. And we use this macro, the UVM component utils macro, to register the My Environment class with the UVM infrastructure. Don't worry too much about what this means yet. It is an idiom that you just need to understand. So whenever you declare a component, you use the UVM component utils macro. And notice that there is no semicolon at the end of that line. We declare the constructor for the environment. And constructors in UVM for every component have two arguments. There's a string name argument and a parent argument that is itself a UVM component. And the only thing we do in the constructor is we call super.new and pass in the name and the parent. This is consistent across all UVM components, and it's just something that you'll get used to doing. Then we have the build phase method. So this is a function. The argument is something we call a phase of type UVM underscore phase. And in the build phase method, this is where we instantiate all of the components that are in our environment, our agents, our scoreboards, our coverage collectors, and what have you. And then in the environment, there is a run phase. The run phase is the only task-based phase in UVM. And all of the phase methods, whether they are functions or tasks, take this UVM phase argument so we know which phase we're in. Now, there are actually other task-based phases that run in parallel with the run phase. But for the most part, they're not really used. So we're just going to stick with the run phase. Inside of the run phase is where we do the interesting things. So in order to control the test, to be able to start and stop things, we use what we call objections. We have to raise at least one objection at time zero. So in the run phase, we'll raise the objection. And raise underscore objection is a method of the phase argument. So we're going to raise an objection in the run phase here. And then we do whatever it is we need to do. In this case, we're just going to wait for 10 time units. And then we drop the objection when we're done. So when all of the objections that were raised during the run phase are dropped, that's when the run phase ends. As you'll see in the advanced UVM course, it is possible to raise other objections after this initial objection is raised. So even if this one gets dropped, all the other objections that get raised also have to be dropped for the phase to end. In the test itself, again, this is a component. It's extended from the UVM underscore test base class. So we register it using the UVM component utils macro. And then we declare the environment. In these examples, we're going to use the underscore h notation to indicate a handle to the environment. But you can name them whatever you want. And then just like any other component in the my test class, we declare the constructor again with the name and the parent argument. And there is a build phase. And in that build phase is where we actually instantiate the environment. We do that through a method called create. We assign to the my environment handle the result of this create call. Now, don't worry about the double colons and type ID and things. This is part of the UVM infrastructure. And what it allows us to do is to create an instance of the my environment type. 
but to do it in such a way that we have flexibility to override the type later if we want to. So we use the create method. So instead of calling the constructor, we're going to call this create method, which will in turn call the constructor. We call this a wrapper pattern in object-oriented programming. You just need to understand that the first piece is the type of the component, type ID is an internal element of that component, and then the create is a static method of the type ID type. We say create and then we give it the two arguments, the name and the parent. So in this case, the name is my underscore env underscore h, and the parent is this. So the parent of the environment is the test. Then we can put all of this stuff in a package. So in my underscore package, we need to include the uvm macros.svh file. And this is part of the uvm distribution. We import the uvm underscore package using the star notation, and then we can include other files. So in this case, we'll have a my underscore env.svh that includes the environment class, and a my underscore test.svh that includes the test class. This gives us the ability now to just compile this package, and we've included in it all of our code for our UVM test, including the environment, as well as all the UVM base class code required for the compiler to understand what we've written. To instantiate this in a top-level module, again, we need to import the UVM underscore package, and we also import the my underscore package. This now gives us access to everything that we've declared. We have the dot interface and the dot that we saw earlier. And then all we need to do in that top level module is an initial block where we call run underscore test and we give it as an argument the string name of the test type, in this case, my underscore test. The run test method will actually instantiate the my test component and start the phases executing, which will cause the test to run. When we run the simulation, we call vlog on the file that does all the package imports and all that stuff. The top level module is called top, so we invoke vsim on that. And then when we do that, it loads all of the packages, including uvm underscore package and my underscore package and the top level module and the interface and the dot. And then it runs and you see a standard header from the uvm package. And then what happens is we get some information messages printed out. So the first thing that will get printed out at time zero is from the reporter, which is part of the UVM infrastructure, and it just indicates that it is running the test, my underscore test. When that test is complete at time 10, we issue a message that says, from this file, uvm underscore objection.svh at line 1116 at time 10, the reporter is issuing a test done message, which says the run phase is ready to proceed to the extract phase, which means that we're done with the test. And then at the end of the simulation, we issue a report summary. So it shows how many different types of messages were issued. In this case, there were two UVM underscore info messages, one from RNTST and one from test underscore done. And then we call dollar $finish. And at time 10, we indicate that the simulation is completed. So there we have an actual UVM example that was run to completion, issued a message at the beginning and at the end. We raised the objection to begin with to allow the test to run through 10 time units. Then we dropped the objection, which indicated that it was time to end the test. Again, summarizing, we have our dot, which is a module. We have the UVM verification environment, which includes the variable part, which is the test that configures the fixed part, the UVM environment. And these are all system Verilog classes. And they communicate with the dot through a system Verilog interface. The DUT interface and the DUT module are structural, and everything is included in a top-level module, and things are kicked off by calling the run underscore test method in an initial block in that top-level module. That's all for the UVM Hello World example. Stay tuned for session three.